Okay, so project two is on floristics, uh, assessment of caves and karst areas in Calabar zone. Okay, so for the next slide, uh, sorry po ha, ang, uh, ang nakag-share po na slide ay si Eugene because I have unstable internet connection. So pag mawala po ako mamaya, uh, wag po kayo magtataka. Pag narinig niyo po ay boses lalaki, si Eugene po ang sasalo po sa akin. Okay. So in general, this project aims to document, determine, and assess plant diversity of selected caves and karst areas in Palabar Zone using botanical field techniques to generate baseline data. Okay, specifically, it has six, no, six, um, six objectives, no, may, uh, specific objectives, sorry. First is to conduct space inventory of plants found in cave entrances and the environs. So if you heard Dr. Leet a while ago, there are three zones in the cave. So you have the entrance, then you have the twilight, and the other one would be the dark zone. So our group would be focusing only in entrances and if uh, also up to the twilight zone, okay? Two is to determine the conservation status of plant species using published data. Next is, of course, once we have done that, the most important thing is you collect these specimens and then we deposit these specimens in the um, kahook, the uh, botanical herbarium, and the other one would be in the forestry herbaria located at the upper campus, okay? Next, we uh, to propose uh, initial recommendation. Propose initial recommendation for conservation management of critical plant habitats in the assessed caves and forest areas. Next, fifth, capacitate local government units through local trainings on species conservation and the final would be to engage and conduct capacity building for local people from various government and non-government organizations and universities in conducting cave research for the conservation of the cave biodiversity. Okay, next slide. Why do we need to conduct floristic assessments on caves and karst landscapes? Meron ano bang meron sa uh, caves and karst landscapes. So if you have heard Dr. Lee and of course, yung tatapos ng natin si Dr. Islava, they gave an overview of what are caves and how caves would be formed, okay? So caves and karst landscapes actually would support animal species. There are animals that could thrive in uh, karst habitats only, but there are also animals that could live in both karst and non-karst habitats. So number one, siempre, they provide habitats for these animals. They would be, could be vertebrates or invertebrates. And then when you talk of caves and karst, the other name for karst would be areas where you have primarily you have limestone there. And this limestone would actually be, the substrate then for these karst areas would be very unique. No? So we, Tendency is if you have unique soil type, okay, that would support only unique vegetation. So parang pag unique yung soil type, meron parang unique vegetation. So it's interesting uh, actually to conduct, no? see what are these unique vegetation. Number three, um, this uh, serve as natural laboratories if you want to do biogeographical studies, ecological, evolutionary studies, and of course, before you can do the, the, these this studies, you have to first see what would be the plant species. Ano ba yung kaya kailangan mo ng magfloristic studies? What are the plants found in this, uh, in these caves and karst landscapes? Okay. Next, of course, because so uh, we talk of uh, caves to be having and karst landscapes to be having unique vegetation to say. Iba nga yung kanilang uh, substrate. So, possible that uh, there could be also um, uh, unknown, no? possibly, you know, possible slagang. we have a wealth of unknown uh, endemic species. So, sabi natin, endemic species. So, actually, when, you, when we do, when we conduct touristic assessments, it's not actually to look for new species, 
look for new records plus factor na lang po yan kasi there have been uh, not much studies on what would be when you talk of cave cave ecosystems, ano ba yung mga flora na nakikita mo sa caves, entrances, at saka hanggang sa twilight zone? Walang masyadong studies. So, plus factor na lang yan, if after this project, ay meron kaming makita mga new species and new records, plus factor na lang po yan. Okay? And then of course, sabi natin, uh, when you talk of caves and karst landscapes, they ano, display an important role in understanding yung Ano may yung mga terrain at saka yung ecological, uh, ecological habitats, the ecological history of escapes and cars landscapes. Okay, next. So this is how we will do it, you know, yung ating workflow for project two for the plant group. So if you look at A, uh, naka-red po yan kasi masisipag po ng aming, ano, masipag po ang aming mga staff. They have started doing an inventory based on herbarium records of what species uh, would be found in ano, in karst areas. Kita naman po yan based to the herbarium label. And of course, gathering data on published articles from the net. So nakapagsimula na po. And then um, B would be um, site reconnaissance. We have five target sites. So I think... Uh, Hindi ko po alam po kailan magsisimula. Sana makapagsimula na po. And then with regards to the meto methodology, we'll have sampling plots. We'll establish sampling plots after the site to recon. And then do data gathering following the bumps for terrestrial ecosystems of the DNR. And once we have done that for the five target sites, so balik, uli sa, uh, balik na po sa, ano, sa LB, we'll do some data analysis. And the last but not the least, siyempre sa year three na ito would be yung presentation of results to funding agency, partners, and other stakeholders. And the last but not the least would be communicating whatever we have, you know, we have gathered so, through publication. Okay, next po. Next slide. Yan. So next slide. Ito yung sinasabi natin. No? Uh, we have, you know, we have uh, information on limestone flora. May mga researches na done. Pero scattered in literatures. And then we have you know, different funding agencies. So hopefully uh, our staff has uh, tried you know, um, collating all of these so we could use this app, uh, as a you know, parang reference material namin. Okay. So among these, sabi natin, five years ago, uh, very important would be this species named after Dr. Juan Carlos Gonzalez, strong Gilodon Juan Gonzalez E. Uh, it's a limestone, it's a limestone species, but uh, we also have uh, seen this in one of the caves in Bani, Pangasina, sa Pelpel -Pel Cave, nandun siya sa uh, cave entrance ng Pelpel -Pel Cave. So this is... Uh, the eight species of strong gilodon uh, discovered in 2016, and that also placed the Philippines as the center of diversity for strong gilodon. Not not for anapahat, not for species of one gonsalensi, but for the genus strong gilodon. The center of diversity would be uh, the Philippines. Okay, uh, and then we uh, we have also a, a collab a collaboration with Masungiji Reserve where we. Uh, try to um, uh, look at the life, na yung lang parang life history ng Juan Gonzalez. In Mulanay Quezon, we were on, uh, we, we found the flowers. That's a type locality. Then also the green the green pad. But uh, in uh, in Masungi G Reserve, that's where we observed the green the green pads. I mean the green fruits turned into purple also, and uh, I think they were able to germinate some seeds. So almost complete na po yung life history ng strong Don Juan Gonzalez. That, they said it's a purple jade vine. And actually, pag sabing jade, that's strong. Jade vine is uh, strong Don macrobotry. So, uh, we have, ano, we have baptized, ano. So, no na po ito na the, co the common name. Since there's no local name for this, so the common name now is Jaycees vine. And interesting also because when you talk of our, you know, when you talk of uh, the flora, hindi lang po flowering plants ang focus ng project to will also be dealing with fern and fern allies as well as bryophytes. So we have here Selaginella atimonanensis from Atimonan Quezon province. So ito yung mga 
mga researchers on limestone, ano, limestone, new species found on limestone, ano, forest over limestone. We will also have ferns also. Uh, so flowering plants, bryophytes, and ferns, yun po ang focus ng project to. And this begonia tagbanwa, just to mention that when you talk of flowering plants, they are found in cave entrances. They're really ano, talagang awesome to look at, so beautiful. Sabi nga ni Sir Lit kanina, when you talk of caves, ano, we accept any gender, kaya nakita niyo yung bulaklak na yan. Nakapangalan kay Sir JC. O, oh, di ba, Sir JC? Although, merong isa pang ano eh, I think that was mentioned, yung isang cave dwelling cockroach uh, named after Sir JC also. Okay, next slide po. Yan, yan, new. It's a new species also of palm. Calamus carcicola, uh, discovered by Jiro Adorador and Dr. Fernando, Eastern Summer and Shergao. Then also you have uh, orchids also from, ano, from forest over limestone found in summer. So the Sudaria samarana and uh, a new species of Medinilla named after one of our, ano, one of the consultants of this project, C. Si Prof. Um, Pastor Malabrigo. So we have Medinilla Malabrigo. So pag tinignan ninyo, no, scattered yung mga literatures of new species, pero just tell us na when you talk of forest over limestone, talagang meron eh, mataas yung probability that you will always find something new and not only native or endemic, but also uh, not only indigenous, but also endemic. Okay, next slide. Yan, isa pa, no? Uh, Coribas is actually a helmet orchid. Ito yung pinaka-recent, no? Uh, from Bohol and Dinagat Island. No? So discovered by Tandang and et al. So Danilo Tandang is also one of the consultant of uh, our of Project 2. Then another um, species of plant, Mycetia sudixiana. Also discovered by Danilo Tandang. And we have this one, Secotria boholensis. Okay. From, I think this is a new record. Okay. Next. Okay. So it's not only new species, but um, studies have been done also to, uh, to look at floristic composition, plant species diversity, you know, for vegetation analysis, like for example, this one done by um, um, Mr. Paklibar and Mr. Tadjosa on the Quezon Protected Landscape in Southern Luzon. So this one would cover uh, mostly three species. And then we also have this one, uh, Karst Forest, Ferns and Fern Allies of Bohol. So these are uh, done, published in different years. And I think the most recent here is this checklist and conservation status of vascular plants, limestone forest in uh, Ilocos Norte Watershed Forest Reserve. Okay, so, um, um, so far, ito pa lang po, ibig sabihin, our, our group will be doing the same, no? contributing to the um, space diversity touristic studies of the five different caves no? for the whole three years, uh, probably first two years. Okay, po, next. Yan. So there is still things, you know, many things to be done to be accomplished. And we, di we divide them into scientific, the social aspect, and the conservation action. Okay. So in terms of scientific, we, because we need to document uh, the flora in the cave entrances and up to twilight zone. Kasi pag cave entrances po, probably we'll be seeing more of the flowering plants. But when you talk of the twilight zone where you have small amount of and a small amount of light, there's still some you know, plant, plants that can survive there. Uh, mostly mga bryophytes or what we call as lumut bato. And the other one would be the ferns and fern allies, not the big ferns, but the small ones. So once we do that, then we can provide baseline information on the plants of uh, thriving on forest over limestone over caliper zone. Of course, we will be able to give you, provide you with the conservation status of this plant species. And uh, number three, before 
everything else runs out, we need to collect, we need to preserve, we need to curate these specimens and we have to deposit them uh, in uh, the herbaria. This is for academic and cultural importance. So somebody would like to no, to, to go back, no? I think they're not sa caves. Once we have these ano, in our herbarium, then you can always go back and look at uh, no, look at the labels and uh, the information that we have provided. Okay, and in terms of social aspects, sempre ito pinaka importante because these caves, now we will only visit the caves for up to the time that we have money in the project. Pero once the project is done, sempre we have to sustain, ano, sustain. Ano ba yung meron do sa caves? Ayon, baka maubos naman yung mga halaman. So we will have to engage the local people in conducting research and conservation activities. Number one, sempre yung conservation activities niyan. We make the local community, whether the local community would be the LGUs or, say, for example, yung ating mga academic partners and universities um, will have to conduct capacity building activities for them. Uh, we have to empower them and uh, info, um, inform them on how to conserve this natural resource, not only for plants, but as a whole, like uh, what has been mentioned by, the, by Prof. Alviola. Okay. In terms of conservation, we have to come up with an indicative conservation plan, which will involve both the academic and the local stakeholders. And sabi ko nga, pag natapos na, kailangan may may iiwan po, no? A local community or whoever, they will become the stewards of nature. Sila na ngayon yung protector. No? Bakit yung mga cave na yon, ang maprotektahan lahat ng halaman at lahat ng mga buhay ilang na tumitira doon sa pwepo. So we'll have to conduct uh, training for local con conservationists, uh, how to assess plant species diversity, and then also training them up to uh, ano, writing scientific reports, hindi lang lang siguro scientific reports, articles for publication, even yung mga tinatawag nating uh, popular articles, kailangan din malam, uh, kailangan din silang mag-train. Kasi after ng project, iiwanan na namin, so ito na yung sino na ang magpapatuloy. Okay? Next slide po, yan. introducing po, uh, ako po ay consultant lang po dyan kasi si Michelle po ang ating, ano, ang ating uh, MC. Baka po ma-overexpose na rin siya. So sabi niya, ma'am, ikaw na, okay lang naman po sa akin. So ang project leader po natin ay si Michelle Alejado and then ito po yung iba pang mga project team natin. Uh, si Eugene po, Lugatok, uh, took Bio 154, Cape Ecology, yung undergraduate niya. Tapos nung mag-MS siya, botany, naku, nag, ano po yun, nag-specialize siya sa bryophyte. So, oh, he will be, he will be, you know, doing the identification of the bryophytes in the, in the cave entrance as well as those in the toilet zone. And then si John Calvin, IBS Forestry, yan po kasama natin. Si Kuya Ariel, sabi natin, si Kuya Ariel has been with Ano, uh, several times na makakasama kami niyan na Ariel sa mga uh, uh, cave, cave exploration. Although ako, hanggang doon lang po ako sa Twilight Zone. Takot na po ako ang pumasok sa, uh, sa Dark Zone. Sila Sir Philip na yan at saka sila, sila Sir June na yung team niya. And the consult, uh, kasama po natin pala no, ang aming bagong ano, project support staff si June Jeff Latero. The three consultants, uh, si Sir Pastor Malabrigo, si Medenilia Malabrigoy, nakita ko po siya sa attendees, hi sir, at si uh, Dani Tandang, Dani nandito pa kayo, Sir Pastor, pwede ka bang magpakita para makilala ka? Ah, ako baka umalis sa si sir. Of course, si, si Dani Tandang po, uh, well, he, he has discovered several several species of you know, named and uh, discovered several species of uh, plants, flowering plants. So he's with the National Museum of Philippines. So yan na lang po, kapag may tanong po, uh, mamaya na lang po, marami pong salamat, sana marami kayong um, nakuha, hindi lang po sa, sa aking presentation, pero doon po sa mga previous presenters. Salamat, Michelle!